have two flaps. It's going to have a large and a small flap. And the large flap goes in first, and it is six by eight and a half. And you're going to score a half inch. And I forgot to put tape on it. And then you're going to dry fit it and make sure it's not hanging over the edges when you, when you put it down. <clears throat> Let me get my tape on. And if you're new to the channel, you'll notice that I'm using what we call a tape tear tool. And um, it's something that I sort of created out of necessity. I was always picking up a ruler or something to tear my tape, but it would always get buried. Um, so I put a knob on it, and this is just a two by two acrylic square. And then there's two reference lines. One is at one eighth and the other is at a quarter inch. So if you're measuring something um, from the edge, it's pretty easy, easy to do. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add tape to this too. Anyways, these are available in our shop and you just look look for tape tear tool and it will pop up and I love it. Um, the first edition was in clear um, and then we'll, we had these made and I, I really like this bright color because it just makes it easy to locate on my desk. Okay, so we are going to center this flap on the pocket page. The pocket page openings are to the left and right. I'm gonna verify, yep, yeah, that I've got it right side up. So that's up, this is down. I put the center line here, which is at three, and the center line here, which is at four, because this is eight by eight, and this is six inches across. So I'm going to line up those two dots and lay down this flap. <clears throat> So that's one flap. So the next flap is going to get centered up and down on this flap. So what I did is I put a mark here at the midpoint, which is at four inches from the bottom. And then I put a tick mark here, which is the midpoint of this, which is six inches. So that's at three. <clears throat> now this opens down. And I almost put this in backwards and this is going to open up. So it'll kind of zigzag. And I'll show you what it looks like when I get it fully installed. Okay, so it's going to open up and then down. And that's what it looks like from the top. So it opens up and then down. Okay, that's, that's it for installing the flaps. We are gonna use two sets of magnets, one to hold this closed and one to hold this closed. <clears throat> and I got in here without my fat double-sided tape, so I'm just gonna use some regular tape. It doesn't have to be double-sided tape. All you're trying to do is get it in place and then soften the edges so they don't show so sharply um, beneath the paper. <clears throat> For those of you that have fur babies that watch with you, I'm gonna give you a warning. Nala has got a squeaky toy and she's going to town on it. So she may come charging in here with it. <laughs> Your dogs will be looking everywhere for it. In fact, I think she's on her way, I hear her. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna add a second set here. Well, she's barking at me. That means she's got it lost under a piece of furniture. So after I get this magnet set, I will go help her. And then I'll be back in a minute and we'll start decorating this. Okay. Okay. 
but I, I'll go ahead and share with you. I cut these two strips off of the 12 by 12 um, off of this. So I cut one from the left and one from the right. And then I'm gonna flip them so that the, the dark blue strip is actually going to be on the inside and the dark green strip is gonna be on the inside on this side. So those are gonna be our two, two runners on both sides. And I'll be back, I gotta go help her. Okay, sorry for the interruption. I think she just wanted my attention because the ball was not stuck anywhere. But she's such a stinker. She goes and deliberately puts it so that somebody has to get up and help her. <laughs> so she gets the attention she wants. Okay, I'm loving this. Then um, what I've got here for the 6x6 six six is this red piece. And then the two trim pieces are going to be the blues. So this is from Patterns and Solids. There she is. And this is from the 12x12 12 12 collection. These two edges are from the 12x12 12 12 collection. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna start, I think, by laying down the red piece first. So I'm gonna dry fit that. And I have not inked anything, I apologize. I'm a little out of order this morning. A lot of times I'll cut and prep everything the night before and then in the morning when I do the recording, all I have to do is glue it down. But I didn't get that far last night. I was having too many troubles trying to get my videos off my phone and into my my editor. My editor kept crashing on me, which is very disturbing. But I found a workaround. I don't know why it does that. It'll do it like three or four times in a row, days in a row, and then it just starts working. And I have done nothing. Just time has passed. It drives me nuts. I can't seem to figure out what's causing it or what's fixing it. <clears throat> Maybe this year I'll break down and actually buy the professional editor. Maybe I'll have better, more reliability with that. I use iMovie to edit these. And for the most part, it's been fine, but I, I do have those times where, especially if I'm under deadline, I can't let two or three days go by because I can't move a movie off my phone. It's done, but I can't get it off the phone to get it into YouTube. So that's it's a bit frustrating. And that's what happened this week. I lost a day messing around with that. Okay, so... Oh, that doesn't look right. That's really crooked. I don't know how that happened. Maybe it's a scrap and it's not supposed to be here. Um, so just so you know, this is one inch. Um, and it needs to slip ever so slightly behind the hinge here. Or you need to trim a little bit off. But it's actually going to go on the hinge. So I'm going to take my hook tool and run it along and just sort of slightly lift it. And I should be able to push it under. And then you want a one inch strip down here. And I don't know why this one's so crooked, but I do have some more, so I'll just trim off another piece. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the one down here on the bottom. I didn't erase my dot. I can still do it, but it's easier when before you put your paper down. Usually after I lay everything down, I'll come back with my eraser and, and get those little spots. And I'm, I didn't. So let's do it now. There's a spot right there too. Okay, there we go. I just use a magic eraser find that it doesn't smear on the cream paper. Okay, so now we need a one inch strip. And that is Okay, that should be it. 
I did it. We did it. Oh my gosh. If it's not one thing, it's another today. That's too much. Too much ink. Do I have? Nope. I'm gonna have to make it work. It's a new pad, so it's very, very juicy. So what I'm gonna do, because That's so heavy on this this side. I'm gonna tuck it under this way so it's not at the top of the page. It's not as obvious. Okay. Turn it over so it's closer and I can see all the edges. Again, this is page seven, which is the same as page two. little cutie patootie okay I'm just pushing the tape down this works uh, really well too I mm. I've gotten in the habit of using double-sided tape but it's really not necessary because you're just going to cover it with paper okay like I said I've trimmed these two pieces out and we want the band on the inside because we're going to color block here and I think that's going to make for a nice clean lit edge <clears throat> And it just worked out perfectly that I was able to cut right here at the end of this stamp and not have to cut through a stamp. So I was pretty pleased with that. That doesn't always work out. Sometimes you have to cut through one of the images, but in this case, it worked out. But it does mean that you have this leader on the, on the top. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and ink both of these. I gotta dry fit this first. Um, and then I'm gonna check again to make sure I have just turned the right um, orientation before I glue anything down. I don't wanna glue it in upside down. Okay, which I was just about to do. So this is, this is the way it goes, sorry. So this large panel drops down, the small panel flips up. So now we've got it in the right orientation. Let's get one of these down. I'm gonna check one more time. Check, 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 check. Yep, it's right. Because I do duplicate pages, page one is the same as page eight. Page two is the same as page seven. Sometimes when I'm building the book, what I'll do is I'll actually build it that way. I'll build page one and eight because they have the same flaps, then two and seven. And that's why there's already something on the back of this, back of page seven is because I did one and eight and this I did two and now I'm doing seven. And then I'll go back to uh, three and six will be the same. You know, I, uh, the way I present it in the video is in the order of the page because I think that makes most sense to most people. Isn't that pretty? And then we'll pick something to go right in the um, in the center here. Isn't that pretty? So that is the A side of page seven. And I'm, I'm messing around with the idea of matting this and putting this in the center because it, it needs a little something. I'm gonna embellish it. I just don't know how I might use an ephemera card. I might use some cut aparts, but I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. I love these stamps. I love the stamp sheets when Graphic 45 does those. They're so fun. I wanna use a strip to, I think, I believe on page three and six, I'm gonna have, it's gonna have a pocket and I'm gonna use um, a vertical I'm sorry, a horizontal strip of these stamps to go right across the top because I just love the way they look. They're so pretty. And you pull in every single color in the collection when you use the stamps, which is nice. So that is it for the A side of page seven. 
I'll just run through it one more time. Of course, we'll come back and do the bees. And we'll need to do the B sides here. I'm gonna line up my papers. I'm gonna get them dry fit and inked so that you guys don't have to watch me do that and it'll go a little bit faster. So that's it for now. I'll be back shortly with the B side. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page seven. And I've got my uh, papers lined up for the B side. And I think it's gonna look lovely. I think I've got everything trimmed and inked, but you know me, it's hard to know for sure until I actually start laying things down. Make sure which one's which. Okay, this one goes on top and this one goes up here. They're slightly different sizes, so that's why I was checking. This one's inked, so it's ready to go. Now we are going to lay down the blue strip here and then we're going to trim this down to fit if it's required. It may not be required. You may have already figured that out. That's part of the reason I didn't ink it is I might need to trim it. This is... not straight now that i'm looking at it <laughs> as you can see it's very far off so we're not going to use that <laughs> as soon as i started to lay it down i could see that they weren't the same width all the way across we'll use this one and i'll tell you it is mm, just a, just a smidge over three quarters of an inch and I'm just using what I have left, a uh, scrap, so I wouldn't trim something out for this in particular. Let me make sure this is, I've got coverage, I do. So I'll lay this down and then I'll trim out the pink piece to fit. I don't know if you guys noticed, but what I was doing is just putting the two edges together to make sure they're the same height. It's a quick test easier than pulling the ruler out, especially when it doesn't really matter if it's an inch or not. It just matters that it's the same on both ends, whether it was an inch or an inch and a half. It just changes how much I'm gonna trim out the pink paper. Hopefully that all makes sense. There are faint words running across the pattern, so make sure you've got the orientation correct. Then we're gonna mark it and trim it. Okay. Just check in the orientation real quick. Mm, 
I should have trimmed that out a little bit more, but I'm going to live with it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that is the small flap. Now we have the large flap. And I've trimmed out these two papers. And I think I've trimmed it out so this goes on top. Yes, and this is from the, mm, what is this from? This is from the 8x8. Eight eight. So this is one of those um, examples of, um, it looks like a pattern in a solid, but it would be solid on the back. So there's actually two patterns, even though it's monochromatic. Um, and I know it's not a pattern, it's a solid because they don't make them in eight by eight. They only come in 12 by 12, so. But it is easy to mistake them. And again, this is from the collection pack, eight by eight. that pretty and that'll be very easy to lay a picture on you won't feel bad about covering a part of this pattern because it's repeated so now we have a choice we have um, this or this and I think I'm gonna go with the bolder the darker color because I think I've used that somewhere else this is from the this is another example of monochromatic but also from the 8x8 collection pack but easily mistaken for pattern and solid okay last chance <sighs> this is tough I like both but I'm going to go with the uh, feathers. Okay, so there we are for page seven. So I was gonna do something on top of this. I'm gonna add an embellishment, but I don't know what yet. We already have the stamp, so I don't think I wanna introduce another stamp. Um, let's see. Maybe there is an ephemera card that'll work just perfect. So let's shuffle through these. That's a fun option. That's too much red. Ooh, I kind of like that. Yep, pulls in the green. I like it. Let's do it. So I'm going to cardstock back this and then just add it to as a design element, like so. And I am gonna have it offset. Okay, so I need a little bit of cream card stuff, and I don't know if I ran through my whole, oh, I have some whole pack or not. Is that wide enough? It is, okay. Okay, 
that should do it. Yes, it does. Pretty good. Then we're gonna lay it down right here. Okay, I got a little bit too much border on that, so I'm gonna lay it down in the trimmer and take a little bit off. There we go, I'm much happier with that. Okay, looks good. And I, I do want it offset, and I think I'm going to add some chipboard behind it just to give it a little bit of dimension. But I think I need a bigger piece. No shortage of chipboard here. And these are all just pieces left over from other projects. Some people cut these in their paper trimmer. I have not had good luck with that. So I just use a big pair of scissors and I hate doing it because it's painful, but, but I get a better result than if I use it my paper trimmer. Okay, let's add some glue. I may further embellish this with some stickers and chipboard, but you'll see that in the walkthrough. But this is the main part right here. And I really like the way that is really pulling in the greens from the side. So I'm happy with that. It makes it feel more cohesive. straight. Okay, that's it. So page six. Okay, that's it for now.